Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and on this video, I'm gonna walk you through the menu system on a Samsung Q60T. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. The first thing we're gonna look at is the application tray. If you go through this list here, you can see all kinds of different apps. If you press and hold the center button, you can then move the applications around. As you can see, in some cases, you can remove the application. Then we have the home button. With this button, you can log into your Samsung account, you can see any notifications and you're gonna see privacy settings. There's a sponsored ad right here. And then this TV has what they call ambient mode. In here, you can set it up to uh, turn on after so many hours. You also have albums and this is where all the stuff that you download into it is stored. You have artwork. So if you like any particular scenery, you just download these. You can change the background to match your wall. And you do have a music wall if the phone is connected to your TV. Now back on the bottom, you then have your applications. And this is all the apps that are pre-installed. In some cases, you cannot uninstall these apps. So let me open up the app tray just to show you what it looks like in more details. Under apps, this is where you can sign into your Samsung account. And you would go here and just sign in. This is where you can search for apps. And then if you press on the settings, you can see if you can uninstall these apps. Now, you can see that some of them lets you reinstall it or move it or even lock it, but there's no delete option because these are pre-installed applications. Now, if it's something that you downloaded from the App Store, you can definitely remove it from the television, no problem. And as you go down to the bottom of the apps here, you can see there's all kinds of different applications you can find. You can also have these different categories like music, time to kill, these are smart view enabled. This is for people with Samsung phones, uh, as well as games, lifestyle, and a few other choices there. And next we have another search bar right here where you can search for anything in the television. And then we have your sources. So right here we have your television and that's a built-in antenna. And then you see unknown sources is because I have two gaming consoles plugged into it that I haven't powered up yet. And this is just gonna show you everything you need to know about uh, television, like remote access is where you can let Samsung service take over your TV. You have connection guide, and this is where you can use to hook up all your different peripherals. You have universal remote control, where you can program anything that's in the Samsung system, and it will program the one remote with Bluetooth. The next thing we have here is settings. Now, if you go up here, you have a built-in instruction manual, picture profile, sound profiles, gaming mode, and sleep timer, and a few other settings right here. Now, if you go down to settings and press it in, it actually will launch the real settings, so you can go in here and you have options like your picture mode. Then you can go to expert settings. Inside of here, you can change your brightness, contrast, uh, contrast enhancer, you can even go down to the bottom here and reset all your picture profiles, depending on if you have uploaded. Next on the screen, you have sound settings, and this is where you can have the TV speakers plan, fiber optic outputs, and you can hook up Bluetooth speakers to this television. Next, we have sound modes, and this is only for the built-in TV speakers, but we have adaptive sound and amplified sound. Next, we have expert settings for the sound. You have your balance, built-in equalizer so you can go through here and adjust everything but again this only works with the tv speakers we have eARC, so this tv will allow you to pass through dolby Atmos if you're using an external source however samsung does not support dolby vision they use a service called hdr 10 plus for their better picture profiles you also have your digital output formats and this is pcm and it all varies and if you see the pass through at the bottom whenever you have an hdmi source plugged into it you can pass through to go to audio system from a Adobe Atmos uh, streaming device, like an Apple TV, for example. You have auto volume for those annoying commercials, uh, feedback, and you can reset the sound settings here. Now, one thing I will show you, if you see that broadcast is grayed out, the reason is you have to hit the Samsung TV Plus feature on the remote control or just engage it. To give you an example of that, if you go over to Samsung TV Plus and press on it, we now have it enabled. You see that broadcast actually gave you some options, but this can vary with antennas hooked up to it and a few other things. Next, we have general. And under general, we have accessibility. 
This is where you can have the TV to talk to you when you're going through all the different menus. Uh, you can also turn the picture off whenever you're watching some type of content and you only need to hear the audio. You have high contrast, grayscale, and large, and a few other features down here that you may find useful if you need this. Next, we have your voice commands. Now, this is where you can set up Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or Bixby, which is Samsung version of voice commands. Next, we have networks. This is where you can see the status. You can also uh, go in here and change your network settings. Like if you move, you want to change your Wi-Fi, you can do that here. You can reset all your networks, so ask for it again. And then you have expert settings. Under system management, you have your time and sleep timer. You have uh, different languages. You also can change the name of the television, and that's so if you're doing screen mirroring, you can find it. You have your uh, Samsung account again, and you can put a PIN number on it in case you don't want people using your television to download uh, content. And then down here at the bottom, we have home mode, and you can switch it over to what they call store mode. Next, we have external device manager, and this is where you can have the TV to control different things or other things to control TV. For example, if you had a PlayStation, you want the TV to turn on automatic, as soon as you turn the PlayStation on, you make sure that's checked. You also have gaming modes settings. And if you turn that on, you have a couple of options down here like gaming, motion plus. It smooths out your game, but it does make the picture a little bit darker. Next, we have input signal plus. If you're gonna be using any type of 4K products, make sure this is checked off. We have input device manager. This is where you can go in and connect Bluetooth keyboards, mouse, as well as gaming pads. Uh, if you want to use some of the apps and play games with it. Now here we have Device Connection Manager. This is basically showing you pop-ups on the television and you get a device list that shows you everything that's connected to the particular television. So there's some options there. And you can press on Edit to remove any of these off this list. With Apple AirPlay, you can send over your Apple devices to screen mirror off of it, like your iPhone, Apple computer, one thing I wish it had was Apple HomeKit so you can hook it up to control with series, but that is not an option for this TV. Next, we have Eco Solution, and this basically allows the TV to detect the light in the room to dim itself automatically. You have a power saving mode, and this again is gonna adjust the lighting. Motion lighting, as well as have the TV to turn off after a certain amount of time. And the option you get here is four hours, six hours, eight hours or you can just turn it off completely if you don't want the TV to turn off by itself. Next, we have smart features. And this is basically when you turn the TV on, it automatically goes to the hub. You can uncheck this if you don't want to do that, as well as the last app used. Now again, Samsung has a way of not letting you see some of these things that are grayed out, depending on which mode you're in, but I'll always show you. The first thing you have here is software updates. You have device care, where it can actually go through and diagnose the TV if you have any issues. E-Manual is another way to get into the built-in on-screen guides to help you learn the TV. This is remote management for tech support. And About the TV shows you all the different settings for the television, software, and things like that. And then the last thing we have down here is terms and conditions. So you can definitely read through all that. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of information inside of there. And if you're back on the home screen, these are all kind of different programmings based off of applications, the built-in Samsung TV, and some of these are paid service, some are free. You can click on them and you can figure out what's gonna work for you as far as if you need to watch a movie. But a lot of this stuff will have uh, commercials on it. And there's a parental lock at the bottom here and you can also manage the content that you're watching. Next to you.